Am I allowed a crib? What did you say? Am I allowed a crib? Answers to your questions. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. sure. Well, I'm from Edinburgh. Uh, I was a uh, graduate from Edinburgh, went to London and then America, and eventually around the world as a scientist, not as an artist. I only, I've painted nearly all my life, little bits, but uh, only since I came back to Edinburgh have I sort of been serious about trying to do some painting. That's after I retired, of course. <coughs> Well, actually, when I was very young, uh, almost uh, early teens, I found a book on the rules of Japanese painting, which intrigued me. And I bought myself a little squirrel brush and a stick of ink and a grinder and tried to do some painting. And I actually thought it was rather ridiculous that there were rules for painting trees or rules for painting rocks. But uh, one thing I learned from the book was the importance of a negative space in painting, something I'd never thought of before. And uh, after that, I was into murals. I painted a, a Japanese mural in my girlfriend's bathroom of uh, ladies fishing for abalone. This was a sort of after a Hokusai painting. And in my university years here, I painted a mural uh, in a demolished, well, not quite demolished, but condemned building used by the Students' Union, again in Chinese or Japanese style. And in London, I used to collect the odd Japanese print from antique shops or wheelbarrows in the Kensington High Street. And I can always remember being very anguished that I was too poor to buy some very nice Hokusai prints that were shown to me in Bond Street one time. So I started having an interest in Japanese art very quite early. Well, again, that was after I bought a book. Yes. <laughs> this was the exhibition of Kusuda's work in San Diego in, I'm not sure, 2007, I think it was, something like that. He was a, a master textile artist and resurrected many of the old techniques that had been lost and created masterpieces of kimonos. And of course, these were sometimes larger than life kimonos, not meant to be worn. They were meant as art objects to be hung on a wall like uh, as pictures. And that's really where I got the first uh, thoughts about using the kimono shape as a frame that you could put a picture into. Well, uh, in terms of Japanese thoughts and culture, Netsuke have always been interesting to me. And that's a world of its own, really. Uh, but it shows all the different kinds of aspects of Japanese culture from mythology through psychology and symbolism and modeling, etc. Mm -hmm. So that was been quite a big influence. And of course, the kabuki drama was a major feature. Again, that was stimulated by a book <laughs> <laughs> I bought in a second-hand bookshop when I came back to Edinburgh. Mm -hmm. And it immediately gave me ideas about how I could use the kimono, kimono as a frame to have, say, figures stepping out of a kimono onto a stage, as it were, or putting, going back into the frame, or putting the kimono into a landscape, all sorts of ideas. That's a difficult question because <laughs> it's, uh, I just have ideas sometimes, and they come out of nowhere. And sometimes there's a long gap with nothing, and then I get several ideas at once, and I have a series of paintings suddenly I know I want to do on a particular subject. And the field of a thousand souls really 
it was a, a Japanese friend of mine who put that idea into my head. And uh, I was actually not copying, but trying to take the, one of Kubota's images of a kimono. And it suddenly if I could realize, I could put the idea of a field of thousand souls into it. So these things are more or less spontaneous. There's no research done or anything like that. <laughs> Well, uh, the nape of the neck is a very sort of Japanese thing that ladies or, or men, I suppose, look for in ladies. That they seem to think this is a very sexy uh, aspect of a lady. And this one has these painted lines which occur uh, when someone's going to a festival. They put on a little extra decoration on the neck. I thought that was a very weird kind of thing to do <laughs> and interesting. And of course the hat pins and things are all very nice features to put in a painting. Mm -hmm. So I set it with the temple gate as the idea of going to the festival. Some kind of enjoyment, something they find out of funny or interesting, but nothing more than that, really. Uh, they're not great art. <laughs> they're just uh, expressions of myself, I suppose, but I liked a bit of humor, if possible, and to have a secondary meaning in a picture. Yes, these are more recent works, which uh, I haven't got not to the end of my ideas about Japanese subjects, I realized I could start using the kimono for more day-to-day -to -day things that were happening. And the end of the year, for example, I'd make the, uh, the, the bridge, the tori is on the front of the kimono, so it's deliberately broken by the front of the dress and not entire as it would be on the back. So that was a break. And the kimono is also disturbed. It's not in a regular pattern. Mm -hmm. So there's been a disturbance. Yeah. These are the kind of thoughts put into the picture. Yeah. Well, I'm not a painter who uh, just makes a mark and then creates something out of it. Some painters do that. I have to have a, an idea. And it's mapped out of my head, more or less, before I touch the canvas. But I just do an outline drawing, nothing. I don't do anything elaborate. Just an outline and then paint. But my preferred medium is actually watercolour. I like doing watercolours. Because you have to work fast and you only have one go, <laughs> as it were. Yeah. Uh, usually I finish one in an hour flat and that's it maybe a little touch now later, but all done. Mm -hmm. There's no connection. No. <laughs> no, in the past, uh, I've seen several attempts, places where I worked, where they brought in artists to try to bridge this gap between science and arts. Mm -hmm. And although people have tried hard, I've never actually found it very successful myself. I think the artists get quite a lot out of the scientists rather than the other way around. I don't know if that's fair. But certainly, uh, conceptually, and very in, in, in the intellectual sense, I think science has helped artists over the well, 100 years, past 100 years, Scientific ideas have changed quite a lot. And they've been picked up by artists and put into their work. I think that that's, works that way. Hmm. Well, actually, the, the very first one I painted of the kimonos is the one I almost like best. <laughs> uh, I, I'm not saying they got worse, but... Uh, 
I'm not sure I get improved after that at all. Uh, I, would, I would like to do something different now. I think I've done enough on kimonos. So the end of the era might, might be my final kimono painting as well. <laughs> but I've yet to think of something new. I mean, I do other things like landscapes and I do, I'm quite interested in bird painting and seascapes. I like doing that. So I'll find some other, but it would, I like to have a combination of things, not just a straight painting.